हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल स्टडी वी विल स्टडी सफिशियंट कंडीशन ऑफ एक्सट्रीमा और मैक्सिमा एंड मिनिमा फॉर फंक्शन ऑफ टू वेरिएबल्स वी ऑप्टेन सफिशियंट कंडीशन नॉट नेसेसरी कंडीशन we obtain sufficient condition of maxima and minima for function of two variables not for single variables it means uh, we have to we have to obtain a condition and this condition is sufficient for maxima and minima for the function of two variables to obtain this condition let z is equal z is equal to fx y is a continuous function of two variables this function is either continuous in a interval or in domain just like a previous in single variable we take y is equal to fx is a continuous function like this we take z is equal to fx y is a continuous function of two variables if we have to obtain the sufficient condition then first of all we have to consider on taylor's theorem for function of two variables then first of all we see taylor's theorem for two variables f uh, let a comma b is a point in two dimension then by taylor theorem by taylor theorem we have we already know f a plus h comma b plus a is equal to f a comma b this indicates taylor theorem is expanded about a comma b then we write a taylor theorem for two variables as in this form f a comma b h into f x f x means first order partial derivative with respect to x first order partial derivative with respect to y and so on one upon factorial to h square f x x f x x stands for second order partial derivative with respect to x and uh, same way f y y indicate second order partial derivative with respect to y f x y indicates partial partial derivative with respect to y then again partial derivative with respect to x and so on continue higher order terms may be omitted for this condition for this purpose let let us suppose a comma b is a maximum point we have to select a point uh, at this point either minimum maximum or saddle point for sake of convenience we choose a comma b is a maximum point it may be minimum or side but uh, we select a comma b is a two dimensional point two dimensional point at which maximum occurs then by necessary condition we already know ki if a comma b is a maximum points then by necessary condition of extrema fx is equal to 0 and fy is equal to 0 we already know about this if a comma b is a maximum point then two neighborhood point exist and this neighborhood neighborhood points will be a minus h comma b minus a and again neighborhood points will be a plus h comma b plus a. if a comma b is a maximum point then output of that point output of that point will be always greater 
will be always greater than output of neighborhood points it means we can say that f a plus h a, a plus h b plus k always less than a comma b if uh, that point is a maximum point maximum point then at neighborhood points output 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 is always greater than neighborhood points then we have three conditions first condition taylor's theorem for two variables second necessary condition for extremum fx is equal to 0 and fy is equal to 0 and third condition this is neighborhood condition it is a third point then from first and second condition uh, we substitute fx is equal to 0 and fy is equal to 0 in taylor's theorem then we obtain this result after simplification we get h into 0 gives 0 then we obtain this result in, in third condition we have f a plus h comma b plus k less than f a comma b it is always greater we should always remember this is, this is also greater than f a a minus h minus k but it is not necessarily part of this condition so we omitted this result then uh, simplified result of uh, Taylor's theorem we put a uh, we put the value of f a plus h f b plus k is this we put then by cancellation law we may cancel f a comma b on from both sides after simplification we get a inequality now we divide by k square on both sides if we k square is positive then by dividing in inequality does not affect the sign of inequality if we divide by positive quantity then we have no risk we have it is not necessary to change the sign of inequality and k square is always positive then we can divide on both sides after dividing we get uh, h by k whole square of h by k and so on h by k and this way h, h and k are very very small positive quantity but uh, h by h and k are very very small positive quantity but uh, h upon k is not very very small we can see 0 0.12 it is a very very small quantity 0 decimal 0 0 0 decimal 0 2 it is also a very very small positive quantity but after dividing we get 6 with respect to 0 decimal 0 2 6 is very very large it means this result force that we cannot neglect h by whole square of h by k so we take it h by k as a lambda then this equation turns into lambda square into fxx plus 2 lambda into fxy plus fy by less than 0 it is a quadratic equation in lambda it is a quadratic in equation in lambda like a quadratic equation in secondary standard we have already know about quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 here lambda square indicates x square fxx indicates a small a it means coefficient of x square and this is less than 0 it is a quadratic in equation in lambda and this relation is possible only when d less than 0 d less than 0 and coefficient of lambda, lambda square less than 0 if both occurs then this condition is possible we 
will get this result and how it is possible how d less than 0 and coefficient of lambda square less than 0 we see a quadratic equation x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0 it is a simple quadratic equation here see uh, coefficient of x square coefficient of x and constant term all are equal it means a b and c are equal then we calculate d d less than 0 then we comment roots will be imaginary roots will be imaginary if d less than 0 then roots will be then roots will be imaginary but we should always remember one important result also occurs in this condition sin of x square plus x plus 1 in this condition we also obtain the sin of x square plus x plus 1 it means sin of x square plus x plus 1 will be same as that of coefficient of x square if d less than 0 then roots will be imaginary it's simple condition one more condition occur in this situation ki if d less than 0 then roots will be imaginary as well as sign of this quadratic equation will be same as that of coefficient of x square here coefficient of x square is positive then we can say that x square plus x plus 1 greater than 0 for all x belongs to capital if coefficient of x square is negative then we can say that x square plus x plus 1 less than 0 for all x belongs to capital here this quadratic inequation, quadratic inequation is less than 0 it means d less than 0 roots will be imaginary as well as coefficient of lambda square is less than 0 why less than 0 because sign of this quadratic inequation less than 0 then uh, then it ensures coefficient of lambda square must be less than 0 if this is greater than 0 then coefficient of lambda square must be greater than 0 so on it means that this inequation is possible only when if d less than 0 as well as coefficient of lambda square must be less than 0 d if we calculate d d square minus 4 ac same way we take common minus 4 minus 4 if we take the common minus 4 from LHS side <coughs> if we divide minus 4 on both sides then sign of inequality reversed as we know already by the rule of inequality if we divide by negative quantity then sign of inequality reversed then we divide minus 4 on both sides then sign of inequality reverse then less than 0 turn into greater than 0 if we take fxx as a small r fyy as a small t fxy as a small s then we obtain a result condition sufficient condition for maximum point rt minus s square greater than 0 turn into greater than 0 and fxx less than 0 similar analysis yields the condition for minimum or saddle if we take a comma b is a minimum point then we obtain same result rt minus s square always greater than 0 either for maximum or minimum this change second order partial derivative in respect to x changed in minimum condition fxx greater than 0 for saddle point rt minus s square less than 0 and this is not necessary for saddle point saddle point means that point uh, at point uh, neither maximum nor minimum occurs yani it means we can similar result conclude for minimum similar way may be performed for minima and for saddle point for minima uh, after uh, after as a previous way we obtain rt minus 
minus x square greater than zero, but f x x greater than zero. For settled point to be obtained, R B minus x square less than zero, and this condition is not important for settled. So on, we in in this article we have to obtain sufficient condition of maxima and minima for function of two value. And this is performed with the help of Taylor's theorem for the function of two variables. Thanks.